week. You know, I've been out here almost every day this week trying to um, do a video and don't have anything. Dry, I feel dry. I feel like I don't have anything on my heart to talk about. I, I could read scripture, but there's nothing that comes. Um, going through a battle, spiritual battles. Meanwhile, I've got people coming to my house in the morning time um, that I haven't seen in years and wanting to be saved in particular one friend of mine and we kneel down behind a golf cart in my home and, and he gives his heart to Christ and and it's, it's amazing yet I still have nothing to give no video then um, I'm getting messages all week from people from drug addictions being broken people's children coming out of drugs because we've been praying for them joining them with them in prayer and being delivered got a call today to go to the hospital and see a lady that's dying that wants to give her heart to Christ, and on and on and on I could go. My point is this. This is going to be an unconventional video. This is something a little different. See, I used to be a fighter. I used to be a kickboxer, and, and when we would fight, we would fight full contact. I can remember the last fight I had, I won every round. But the last round, I went down, not because I was hit and, and hurt, but because I was just done. My legs were like spaghetti. I had no more strength in me. I was exhausted, and I went down. I had won the entire match. But because of that last round, if I didn't get up, I was not going to finish well. You know, that's exactly what it's like today. We are in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual fight. A lot of things that we've experienced in life prepares us for spiritual things, and we can learn from those experiences. There is a real enemy out there. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He does not want you to get up. He does not want you to, to fight the good fight. He wants you to lay down on that mat in that ring and not get up. When you get knocked down, he does not want you to get up. He wants you to sit there and feel sorry for yourself, and he wants you to doubt who you are. He wants you to believe that you're what everybody says about you, that you think they say about you behind your back, about your past. He wants you to believe that people look down on you and that people don't uh, respect you and people think uh, things about you that are not, that are not right and that, and that people don't forgive you. And yet some of them things may be true, but the fact is that's not how God sees you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him praise and glory today because this is how God sees you as a child of God. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Now he says a peculiar people. In the Greek, that means you're his possession. He, he wants you. He keeps you to himself. He says you're a royal priesthood. Do you know in the Old Testament, only a priest could go into the presence of God? Only a priest was accepted by God to go into the holy temple? God wants, he looks at you as a, one of his priests. He looks at you, at you as one of his ambassadors, one of, you, one of his children that can go forth and present the gospel and can come to the throne room of God and pray on behalf of your lost loved ones, pray on behalf of the lost in our country, pray on behalf of those that are struggling and going through persecution like the like the coach in Washington State for praying on the 50-yard line, or like the little girl in Katy, Texas, um, I think her name's Jordan, who who was uh, been given persecution through school of her teacher, trying to make her be critical of her faith and make her doubt, and all this stuff I could just go on and on. These battles are everywhere, and maybe you're going through a battle today. Maybe there's something in your life that's going on. I want you to understand this, that there is a fight that we're going to fight. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse for, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they're not might, they're not worldly. It's not a pair of gloves. It's not a pair of uh, feet pads, or or it's not a ring I get in anymore like I used to when I kickbox. But it's it's nothing to do with this world. But it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That means when all the good stuff that's been going on this week in my life, spiritually speaking, and maybe in yours, and all hell's breaking loose, and you don't understand why. Where is God? I don't feel God. I don't sense His presence, but I see Him working all around me. I don't understand it. That's because this thing is not about feelings. It's about faith. We walk by faith. We walk by the faith in Him, knowing that He has got us, and He's going to carry us and deliver us. And when we go down, if we get exhausted and we fall, and we get to a place where we want to just lay down and curl up in a ball, God's saying, get up off that mat and fight. I haven't heard anybody ring a bell. I haven't heard that trumpet sound, hallelujah, because when the trumpet sounds and time shall be no more, the dead graves are going to bust open. Us that are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. I haven't heard a trumpet sound. I haven't heard that yet, but when I do hear that, that's when I can stop the fight. That's when I can quit worrying about the persecution. That's when I can stop worrying about all the things that are going on in our country that I can't control and do anything about because I'll be out of here and you will too if you're a child of God. But until then, we are to get up and fight. I'm going to fight. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to quit because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. In other words, I've received the mercy of God. January 18, 2003, Landon Lakes Golf Course, 
Hole number 15, I was born again. People ask me, well, how can you prove there's a God? Let me tell you how I can prove there's God. Besides all this beautiful nature behind me, the trees and the birds and the grass and the, the deer and everything else that's ever been created, this world that you can look at, if you still can't see God in that, look at me because I was a lost person that had no idea that I'd ever want to stand up in front of anybody and talk about Christ, much less let everybody know my innermost personal feelings and thoughts about things. And I find myself down here in the woods on a t cell phone telling the world about how much I love Jesus and what he's done for me and what a wretched sinner I was. Why? Because the mercy of God, hallelujah, the glory of God that come upon me and saved me that day changed me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You can't meet the God of glory and be the same. You people out there that say, well, I'm a Christian, but you know, nothing's really changed in my life. I'm the same old, same old. You're not saved. You can't meet God and be the same. He'll change you. Will you be perfect? No. You will never be perfect till you stand in glory in heaven, but you'll be changed, hallelujah, and you'll have a testimony. We can't faint. We, faint. we can't quit because if we do, the Bible says, but if we, that if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost, and who the God of this world hath blinded, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the, the image of God, should shine unto them. You can't quit. You gotta keep pressing on. You gotta fight the good fight. You gotta keep praying. You gotta fast. You gotta seek God through all this. When you start feeling like, I wanna quit, I wanna stop, I just can't go no more, you gotta keep fighting, you gotta get up. When you feel like I've gone down, I'm laying on the mat on my back, like I was in that last round of that fight. I didn't want to get up, but I never heard a bell rung. I knew I had to get up. People hollering, get up, get up. And when I got up, I had nothing under me but just pure heart. Go with your heart. Glory to God. Go with the faith that God has given you. He's given you a little strength to keep carrying on. And he says if you'll carry on and if you'll serve him, if you'll be faithful, he'll pull you through this thing and he'll do something marvelous through your life because he loves you and he loves those that you're going to meet day to day. He wants you to be a witness. He wants you to share the faith. He wants you to tell them that he is real and that he has died on the cross for them and he rose again the third day. He wants them to know they can have salvation. He wants that drug addict to know they can be delivered. He wants that person that's living in that pornography to know they can come out of that, they can be delivered. He wants that person to know that no matter how bad their sins are, God will forgive them if they'll repent. He wants that person to know that they can have healing in their life. He wants the people to know that they can have hope. They can know that there's a better place. There's a better time coming. And this world is not our home, glory to God. We're pilgrims passing through a strange land. He wants you to share the truth with them today. The truth is Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. That means there's no other religion, no other faith, no other way but by Christ and Christ alone. Glory to God. I give him praise and glory for the trials I've been through. I give him praise and glory for all the hardships, all the persecution. I give him praise and glory and honor for who he is, the Lamb, the Son of the living God, seated high in glory, high and lifted up. I give him praise and glory in the woods today on the very dirt that he's made, breathing the very air that he's given me to breathe in my lungs. I give him praise and glory for all things. Get up. It's time to fight. Don't lay down. Be encouraged today because God loves you and we're praying for you and you pray for us. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for this message. Lord, I know it's different. And God, I don't know what you're doing in my life, but I know you've got your hand on me. I know that you've got your hand on the people out here. I thank you for those that's been delivered from drugs, the messages we've gotten. I thank you for those that's been saved. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace, and your power. I thank you, Lord, that when our nation is being persecuted and Christians in our nation is being persecuted, that we don't have to cower down. We don't have to lay down. We can stand up and fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And God, I thank you that you've got your hand on us. I thank you that you said you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. And I thank you that you said greater is he that's in us that heed us in this world. We give you praise and glory, Father. And Lord, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah.